So we started our discussion in terms of these videos on financials by talking about the profit planning process. So establishing a profit goal. What is profitability to us? And in the videos that we've been looking at just recently, we've been talking about benchmarking. So maybe our profit goal is related to a benchmark. We want to be just as profitable as the competition. Or we want to be more profitable than we've been in the past. So what we would need to do then is determine the volume of sales revenue we need to make that profit. So how much money do we need to bring in? And we recognize that as we look at the amount of revenue we're bringing in, that means providing more services or making more goods, which will then have more expenses as well. And so we talked about methods for measuring profit. And if we look at, sorry, I'm just scrolling through to an example here. If we're looking at ultimately setting a goal for profitability, we have a certain amount of revenue that we think we will need to do so. And we recognize that as we sell more goods or services, that of course is going to impact the cost to make them. So we have the cost of goods sold or the cost of revenue. And we recognize we also have costs that are operating expenses that are not tied to any particular unit. So we have our overhead, we have um, the equipment, we have our upper management, uh, those expenses that come as well that will impact ultimately that profit. So we set a profit goal, but then we need to figure out if we can reach that profit goal in terms of how much revenue and then how that will impact the expenses. And then does that really get us to that profit goal? So I'm just going to go way down if I can. Of course, it's probably going to crap out. There we go. Um, so I'm just scroll back through here. So when we come back and we say, okay, well, does that really get us the profit that we need? So we compare that estimated profit with the profit goal. Does that get us to where we need to be? And are there alternative ways to improve our profits? So we need to consider methods for improving our profitability. We've talked already about ways to measure profitability. We've talked already about benchmarking in terms of setting that goal. Now we need to look at what we can do to be more profitable. Okay, what are the alternatives for improving profitability? Once we have looked at that alternative, we determine how the expenses and profit vary with what we decide. And then we're going to need to select from those alternatives what we're going to do to reach that goal of profitability. So we talk about profitability. We're talking about an organization that is more liquid. We're talking about an organization that, balance, that values both the balance sheet and the income statement, one that emphasizes stability. We want growth, but too rapid of growth can also mean decline in the future. And we want to look at long-term planning, not just short-term. So there are ways to increase profitability. If we go back to our calculations on gross margin, uh, we can increase our profitability by bringing in more revenue, so we could raise the sale price. For example, in our gingerbread house, we can make the price we sell it for higher. But of course, that assumes that people are willing to pay for it. Alternatively, we could lower the cost to make it, and we could focus on that cost of goods sold. We could focus on the costs that are tied to the production of the unit. So these are variable costs, costs that change with the amount we produce. The more you produce, the more the costs go up, that makes them variable. Fixed costs in comparison are costs that don't change with the amount you produce. That's your equipment, that's your machines. So let's start first by looking at raising the sale price or lowering the variable cost. This is what we call break-even analysis. So break-even analysis looks at our volume of sales, we're looking at our total revenue, and we're comparing it to our expenses. So the more we sell, the more we're gonna bring in in terms of revenue. However, the more we sell, the more we're gonna have to make, and that's gonna make that cost of goods sold go up. So there's going to be more expenses. There will be a quantity where we have our sales revenue equal to our expenses. 
Okay, the money bring in is equal to the money going out in terms of those costs per unit. So here we are, recognizing that our total costs are not just those variable costs, those costs of goods sold, but that we're going to have some fixed costs, our equipment, our building, and then as we produce more, that total cost will go up because of the variable cost. So we're gonna reach this point at which we break even. Beyond that quantity, what will happen is, is we will continue to bring in more sales revenue. The total expenses will not go up as much and all this is profit. So in a break-even analysis, we are looking for the quantity at which we've covered those fixed costs and when we include the variable costs, we are covered in terms of the cost versus sales revenue. Beyond that quantity, we're making profit. So we wanna know where this is and so that we can sell at a higher quantity than break even so that we can uh, make some profit. Now, how do you become more profitable? I'm just gonna change colors here. We can become more profitable by making our sales revenue go up, right? If I shift this line up, so here we are. And if I shift the line for sales revenue because I can charge more for my good, yeah, let's try that again. Let's erase this, I don't like that too straight. Okay, let's try this again. So sales revenue, expenses, break even. Okay. If I can make my sales revenue go up, notice that the break even quantity is now lower. And that also means that I'm gonna be making more profit the more I produce. So one way to increase profitability is to increase sales revenue by increasing the price. Alternatively, I could take, here's my sales revenue, here is my expenses. Let's try that again, because that doesn't look like it's going up. It looks like it's going down. So let me draw that one more time, draw. All right, here's our break even. If instead we can make our expenses go down, then notice that we are at a lower break even quantity and that means that higher quantities more profits. So we use the break even analysis to identify the quantity at which we're breaking even and to recognize that a higher quantity is more, more profitable. But we can also use this to show how we would increase profitability those first two items on the list, in terms of raising the sale price would increase that profitability and lowering the variable costs would increase that productivity because both of those would move that break even price or break even quantity down to a lower quantity so that we are making more profit. There are other ways to increase profitability besides those two. We'll look at those in just a moment. But in terms of calculating where this break even quantity is, uh, we won't do that in this class. Uh, we'll actually do it in operations management in your third year. Uh, but if you're looking for how you calculate that, we take our fixed cost divided by our price per unit and subtract from that price per unit our variable cost per unit. So then that will give you your break even quantity and then as we saw on the graph, we can see any quantity beyond that is earning us a profit. We can also do this using linear programming, which is what we'll do in operations management. But for today, the focus is on increasing our profitability so we can raise the sale price, lower the variable cost. Ultimately, we're looking at lowering the break even quantity to get us to higher profitability. Other ways to increase profitability are to smooth out seasonal variability. Maybe you have a company that, maybe you sell ice cream. Lots of demand certain times of the year, no demand in the winter. So that means that you either are going to have to shut down operations for half your year, 
or which is costly then to rehire everybody and find people or you need a way to smooth out the operation. So is there a way to make a second good the other part of the year that we can sell? Or can you produce and store whatever you make uh, so that uh, you don't have to produce as much and have as many workers and as many equipment running for a small amount of time? Instead, we can have those same people working throughout the whole year with less equipment and so that means that overall our profitability would increase. Can we use our idle capacity? So idle capacity is uh, when you have people sitting around, they're idle. Uh, when you have machines sitting around idle, uh, that's costly, right? Because you're paying for those people, you're paying for that maintenance, you're paying the overhead on that building in terms of the building itself and keeping the lights on. So can you use the idle capacity to do something? So in, in operations management, our third year, we look at capacity planning. Uh, how do you ensure that you are well utilizing your people and your machines? So if there's all this downtime, maybe it's because you are waiting for supplies to come from another company. Is there a way to use that idle capacity or reduce that idle capacity so you're not paying people to do nothing? Can we outsource? So is it cheaper then to find someone else to make something for us? Or maybe it's cheaper to insource for us to do it ourselves rather than hire someone else because of the issues in terms of transport, shipping, um, quality issues and things like that. So we're all of these are looking at making our costs go down, focused here on um, not so much the variable costs, but some of the more um, fixed costs in terms of the process. Can we change our media? Um, that What are we using for advertising? So can we increase our sales uh, in terms of promoting it to new customers, getting the word out? Can we change the quality of the product? So again, maybe this allows us to raise the sale price because people see it as a higher quality. In our demo with the gingerbread houses, if you had lots of fancy decorations, you could sell it for more. Uh, so can we get more with a higher quality product? We could also change the product mix. So maybe we make a combination of different goods or provide different services. Do we cut the ones that have low profit margins um, and change out what it is we provide in terms of goods and services to a combination that has more profitability overall uh, by weeding out the ones that are lower profitability. As we get into quality management, we can look at the idea of Kaizen. So Kaizen is small improvements. The idea here is that we're not going to spend a bunch of money on consultants and big radical changes to improve our processes. But if we can do small, tiny changes that add up, Right? Each tiny change results in improvement, which results in higher profitability, either from more revenue, more sales, or for lower costs. Um, then that increases the profitability to our organization. When we look at quality management, we're also going to look at lean production. So the idea here is that uh, we reduce waste. There are different ways to reduce waste. They include if we don't have as many defective products that we have to throw out, that saves us money. We need less materials to produce if we're not throwing away half of what we make. Can we streamline the process uh, in terms of our production? That will also reduce waste. Can we reduce the amount of movement back and forth in terms of people and materials? Because that costs time and that time is worth money. So uh, ways to reduce the waste in the production process will also increase profitability. We'll come back to Kaizen and lean production uh, in a couple videos as we look at quality management. But if you're eager to look at those particular topics, I'll have some links to some videos uh, right here. So we've been talking in this video in terms of ways to increase profitability for our organization. So if you're working along with our class, in a previous video we talked about a balanced scorecard. 
and a key performance indicator. So now looking at the profitability of our organization, what is a reasonable goal that we could have related to profitability? We could put that on a balanced scorecard. We could come up with our KPI, our key performance indicator for measuring it. And then we could set the goal. Maybe that comes from a benchmark, from a standard, maybe from the industry. And we could compare to where we currently are and get a goal. So combining the discussions from the last couple of videos, can you create a balanced scorecard to improve profitability of your organization? What would the KPI be? What would the goal be? And then what would be the benchmark that you're using? What is that goal that you're setting? And then how are you performing?